It's been well over a year since the tragic death of Taylor Hawkins in Bogota, Colombia. Yet fans are still struggling to find any closure, as no official cause of death has ever been given for the beloved Foo Fighters drummer. However, we can reconstruct the events that led to his untimely passing by investigating first-hand testimonies from Taylor's inner circle, starting with one of his closest friends, Pearl Jam drummer Matt Cameron, who revealed to Rolling Stone magazine that Hawkins was considering resigning from the Foo Fighters just before he died. He told me that he couldn't do it anymore, stated Cameron. Those were his words. The 50-year-old drummer was struggling to keep up with back to back gigs, where the Foo Fighters would typically perform for a total of three hours, twice as long as the average band and one of the longest sets across all music genres today. Cameron would also assert that Hawkins opened up to Foo Fighters frontman Dave Grohl before the band's post lockdown comeback, telling Grohl that he felt uncertain about remaining a full time member if they continued touring at such a relentless pace. Following his conversation with Grohl, Hawkins reportedly told his friends that he had been given assurances of a lighter schedule. However, However, the band's touring itinerary only seemed to get busier, and sources close to him claimed that Hawkins was being pressured to play more gigs than he wanted. There's no disputing the fact that the Foo Fighters touring schedule was absolutely relentless. The band had 40 shows all over the globe booked for 2021, in addition to the 60 that they had planned for the following year. Once again, Taylor would have to spend the majority of his life living out of a suitcase and leaving his family behind. However, despite his concerns, friends believe Hawkins agreed to continue touring to be a team player. A band like that is a machine with a lot of people on the payroll, stated Cameron, so you've got to really be cognizant of the business side of something when it's that big and that has inherent pressure, just like any business. Hawkins' former boss and longtime friend, singer Sass Jordan, added that the drummer was, quote, just so tired tired of the whole game. Following the 2020 lockdowns, the Foo Fighters returned to touring quicker than any other major rock group, and Hawkins would tell Rolling Stone magazine that he was incredibly nervous about his return to the stage. I have major stage fright, Hawkins confessed. I'm in hell right now. His concerns were not just limited to performance anxiety. The drummer also spoke candidly about the challenges of maintaining the youthful intensity of a young man in an aging body. His physical struggles would become frighteningly apparent only a few months later when Hawkins lost consciousness on a December 2021 flight to Chicago. According to Taylor's friend, Red Hot Chili Peppers drummer Chad Smith, he just said he was exhausted and collapsed, and they had to pump him full of IVs. Following this incident, Smith says that Hawkins told him, I can't do it like this anymore. Having nearly lost his life many years ago while on tour with the Foo Fighters, Hawkins was all too familiar with the toll that the rock and roll lifestyle could take on a person. In August of 2001, Hawkins overdosed on heroin in the UK, and fell into a two-week coma. Dave Grohl is said to have stood unwaveringly by his side during the entire ordeal in a London hospital. Grohl was understandably deeply troubled by the situation, as he had already experienced the trauma of his former Nirvana bandmate Kurt Cobain's overdose and eventual death. Cobain himself had collapsed in Rome after overdosing on heroin in 1994. Grohl spoke to him on the phone and expressed concern, saying, I don't want you to die, but Cobain's life would come to an end only weeks later. When Taylor Taylor wound up in the hospital, I was ready to quit music, Grohl told The Guardian in 2011. To me, it felt like music equaled death. Though Hawkins would luckily survive his overdose, recovery was a grueling process. Hawkins had to learn how to read again and suffered from chronic muscle spasms. The drummer knew he'd taken his drug use too far and vowed to make positive changes in his life. So Hawkins developed a new, healthier addiction, mountain biking, which the drummer said helped him vent his frustrations, clear his head, and stay in shape. However, in the years that followed, the stress Hawkins was experiencing as a result of touring was beginning to show on his body. The drummer was rapidly losing weight and simply was not in a healthy place. According to Taylor's former drum tech, he was looking anorexic there for a while. He was definitely stressed out over the last couple of years, because he definitely was showing it in his weight. Sadly, Taylor would not be given any time to de-stress, as only a few weeks after his mid-flight collapse, the Foo Fighters would kick off 2022 with a jam-packed schedule that took them across multiple countries. The tour would kick off with a three-hour show in Mexico City, immediately followed by an eight-hour flight to Santiago, 
where the band would headline Lollapalooza Chile. The group was offered only one day off before proceeding to headline Lollapalooza Argentina on March 20th, 2022, in what would become Hawkins' final performance ever. The band was then supposed to perform at the Asuncionico Festival only two days later, but would get to enjoy an extended rest when the festival was forced to cancel due to severe weather conditions. So on March 25th, 2022, the band would make their way to Bogota, Colombia, where they were scheduled to headline the first night of the Estereo Picnic Festival. However, the tragic events that were about to unfold prevented the Foo Fighters from ever making it to the stage that evening. According to friend and producer Andrew Watt, Hawkins seemed to be in good spirits that day. But shortly after checking into his room at the Four Seasons Casa Medina Hotel, the drummer began suffering from chest pains. At approximately 7.40 p.m. that evening, members of the Foo Fighters crew were alarmed when Hawkins would not respond to several knocks at his door. When they were finally able to gain access to his room, they found Hawkins on the floor, unconscious. A call was immediately made to the city's emergency regulation center, requesting urgent medical attention. When the ambulance arrived at the hotel, paramedics would carry out multiple desperate attempts to revive Hawkins, administering what they hoped would be life-saving CPR to the unconscious drummer. Tragically, it was too late. There was nothing left that they could do, and Hawkins was declared dead at the scene. He was 50 years old. Meanwhile, only 22 miles away at the Estereo Picnic Festival, thousands of eager fans awaited the scheduled arrival of the Foo Fighters, having no clue as to the tragic events that had just taken place. Their excitement would suddenly turn into disappointment when the festival announced at 9.59pm that the Foo Fighters would no longer perform that evening, citing an extremely serious medical emergency. The shocked crowd would only have seconds to process the news, as one minute later, the Foo Fighters' official Twitter account would tell the world that Taylor Hawkins had died. Instead of a spirited rock and roll show, the festival's main stage now hosted heartbroken fans for a candlelight vigil in memorial of Hawkins. While the Foo Fighters anthem, My Hero, blared over the speakers, other grieving fans gathered outside the Casa Medina Hotel, witnessing firsthand as the body of Taylor Hawkins was loaded into a coroner's ambulance. That's when local authorities arrived to carry out a forensic examination of the scene. When police entered Hawkins' room, they found what was described to prosecutors as white powder, along with a few opened alcoholic drinks, according to Colombian journalist Luis Carlos Velez. The following day, the Colombian Attorney General's office released the preliminary results of a urine toxicology test, revealing that the drummer had 10 different substances in his body, including marijuana, antidepressants, and opioids, which according to a report from Newsweek could range from heroin to prescription painkillers and even fentanyl. An autopsy also discovered that Hawkins' heart was about two times larger larger than the average heart for men his age, weighing at least 600 grams. Despite pledging to release the results of their investigation to the public, the Attorney General's office would never disclose an official cause of death. However, according to a confidential report obtained by Colombian publication Samana, investigators ultimately concluded that Hawkins suffered from a cardiac arrest after overdosing on antidepressants and heroin. In the aftermath of Taylor's sudden death, the Foo Fighters announced a series of tribute concerts that would celebrate the life of the late drummer. At the band's first show without Hawkins, the Foo Fighters would open their set with an extremely emotional rendition of Times Like These, where frontman Dave Grohl struggled through tears to finish the song. On drums during the band's challenging return to the stage was Josh Fries, who played on Taylor's own bright pink custom drum kit the very same kit that Hawkins played at his final show in Argentina. Following the performance, Fries took to Instagram to share a heartfelt message about his unique bond with Taylor Hawkins and their shared roots in Orange County, California, where the two grew up a mere 30 minutes away from one another. As fate would have it, their paths continued to align when on May 21st, 2023, the Foo Fighters announced that Fries had joined the band and will be touring with them in support of their 11th studio album titled But Here We Are. The band and has described the album as a brutally honest and emotionally raw response to everything Foo Fighters have endured recently, running the emotional gamut from rage and sorrow to serenity and acceptance. In hindsight, Dave Grohl's statement that music equals death now seems more haunting. The Foo Fighters, of course, were formed in response to the death of bandmate Kurt Cobain in 1994, with the mission to embody the healing power of music and offer a continuation of life. A mission that, now with the loss of Hawkins, has become more relevant than ever.